Hey math students, how you doing? Today we're going to talk about a particular type of sequence and a particular type of series, and that is an arithmetic sequence or series. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, <laughs> dummy, he doesn't know how to pronounce arithmetic. Actually, I do know how to pronounce arithmetic. This word here, uh, it's pronounced arithmetic when it's a noun, and it's pronounced arithmetic when it's an adjective talking about sequences and series. So that is actually the way you pronounce it. But anyway, let's talk about what the thing actually is. So first off, let's talk about the sequence. We have a one, a two, a three. By the way, I'm not super consistent about whether I call this a sub one or a one. So just forgive me. Uh, there are times when I'll refer to this as a one and times where, where I'll refer to it as a sub one, specifying that it's a subscript. That's just an inconsistency on my part and I apologize ahead of time. Uh, a four, a five, etc. Okay, so here's my sequence. In order for this to be an arithmetic sequence, it has to be stepping up or stepping down by the same amount each time. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to add a little amount here that I'll call D. D stands for difference each time to get from uh, from term to term. So, for example, uh, 5, 11, 17, 23, 29, that's an arithmetic sequence because each time I'm adding 6. Uh, 35, 33, 31, 29, 27, etc. That's an arithmetic sequence because each time I'm subtracting 2. As long as you're adding, and I was going to say adding or subtracting, but let's just think let's think adding positive or negative numbers, that way it all falls under adding. As long as you're always adding a term to get from, uh, adding a number to get from term to term to term, that is what an arithmetic sequence is. Okay? So uh, let's talk about how we define arithmetic sequences, or how we, actually not how we define, but, but how we write them, the, the, uh, uh, the formulas that we use. And uh, let's go ahead and use this one, this first one that I wrote here. Okay? 5, 11, 17, 23, 29. An easy way to uh, uh, write a formula for this sequence is to use the recursive method and say a1 equals 5 and a n is going to be a n minus 1 plus 6 for n greater than or equal to 2. That is a perfectly fine way of writing a formula, a recursive formula, for this sequence. It tells you where to start, and it tells you how to get from, term, from one term to the next term for each term. So that works, okay? Or if you want to write an explicit form for this uh, uh, sequence, I guess you would say, uh, well, let's see. Uh, A1 is 5. A2 is going to be uh, 5 plus 6, right? A3 is going to be A2 plus 6, so that's 5 plus 2 times 6. A4 is going to be 5 plus, it's going to be A3 plus 6, so that's 5 plus 2 times 6 plus 6, so that's 5 plus 3 times 6. And so we see that An will be 5 plus N minus 1 times 6. And that is our explicit way of writing what this sequence is. So explicit form, recursive form, they both define the sequence pretty darn well. Um, and so let's, uh, let, let, let's generalize here. So the two ways that you're going to write uh, a sequence, an, an arithmetic sequence in general, will be the recursive form, where you'll say, a1 is whatever it is, okay, you know, A1. And then you're going to say A n is A n minus 1 plus n minus 1 times d, okay? I'm sorry, that is not at all what you're going to say. Whew. I went from recursive to explicit without thinking. So uh, it's just plus d. There we go. All right, 
That's my recursive form for writing a, uh, an arithmetic sequence. The explicit form is the thing that I just accidentally wrote a second ago, okay? And that is that a sub n equals a1, whatever a1 is, you need to know what that is, plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, so some clever people out there are going to be looking at this going, I don't know, this, this just looks a whole lot like a linear function. Yeah, it does. It doesn't just look like a linear function, it is a linear function. An arithmetic sequence is a linear function whose domain is the natural numbers, okay, the positive integers. Well, actually, let me, let me fix that. An infinite arithmetic sequence is a linear function whose domain is uh, the positive integers, okay? A finite arithmetic sequence is going to be uh, uh, a linear function whose domain is a finite subset of the uh, uh, of the natural numbers of the of the positive integers. So um, here, uh, let's look at another one. Let's say we have let's say we have a uh, a function or a sequence. I'm sorry, uh, whose first term is 42 and the sixth term is 27. And I want to know, and I know it's an arithmetic sequence, and I want to know what sequence is that? How do I find out? Well, you find out the exact same way you would uh, if you knew that you had a function, a line, going through the point 1, 42, and 6, 27. Okay? You'd probably look at this and say, oh, okay, well, let me find the slope. Uh, the slope's going to be uh, 42 minus 27, that's 15, over 1 minus 6, that's negative 5, and 15 over negative 5 is negative 3. And then I'll probably use my point slope form with one of my points. I'll take the first one, and I'll say it's going to be negative 3 times, and let's use n instead of x, uh, n minus 1 plus 42. Yeah, that's exactly right. That is exactly what we do. Now notice... The slope, which generally when we're talking about linear functions, we call that m or sometimes a. In this case, the slope is what we've been calling d, the difference between the terms. It's the exact same thing. Okay, so that would be our, here, let me say a n equals, and we have a perfectly fine explicit form for our, uh, uh, for our uh, um, sequence. If I want a recursive form, well, I've already got a1, so a1 equals 42. I would go through the same uh, procedure of finding out what d is. It just find the slope of the line that goes through those two points. And so that tells me what d is. Uh, or I could look at this and I could say, I could just think to myself, all right, I'm going down 15 and I'm taking five steps. How far down am I going each step? Well, 15 divided by 5, 3. So if I'm going down 3... It's going to be minus 3 times, uh, oops, oh, I'm sorry, a1 is, whoa, a1 is 42. Wow, I'm a little off my game today. And a n is going to be a n minus 1 minus 3 for n greater than or equal to 2. Okay, can you see that? I think you can. All right, that would be my recursive formula for this sequence. Okay. So really, if you, if you kind of, in your brain, if you equate arithmetic sequences with linear functions, I think you'll do pretty well. Now let's talk about arithmetic series. Okay. So in order for me to talk about arithmetic series, I really can't do it without talking about the story of young Carl Friedrich Gauss. Now, I say, oops, I say uh, the story because... Uh, it's a story, okay? It's kind of like George Washington and the cherry tree. I'm not sure this is really true. It probably isn't, but it's a great story nonetheless. So, young Carl Friedrich Gauss, who is considered, by the way, by many to be possibly the greatest mathematician ever. Uh, but anyway, when he was a little boy, uh, he's in school, and he comes into school, and his teacher is just having a rough time. 
his teacher is he's got a headache and he's tired and possibly he had a long night the night before. He just wants these little kids to be quiet and leave him alone. So he says, look, just add up the numbers from one to a hundred and that ought to keep you busy for a while. It keeps young Carl Friedrich busy for about 20 seconds. And then he comes up and he says, the answer is 5,050 which of course infuriates his teacher and it has sort of a Disney-like ending where we all go, ah, oh, it's the spunky kids that win in the end and it's the crotchety adults that lose. But anyway, uh, I like that story. Let's look at what the story says young Carl Friedrich did. So he's supposed to add up all the digits from one to a hundred. So, okay, let's start adding the digits. One plus two plus three plus four, etc. plus 49 plus 50. Okay, we got those. And then on another column, he starts adding from 100 down. 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus 97 da, 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 plus 52 plus 51. Okay, two columns with 50 digits in each column. And then he thinks to himself, well, uh, doesn't matter what order you uh, uh, add things in. Okay, I know, I know my commutative property of addition. Uh, so I could just say 1 plus 100 plus 2 plus 99 plus 3 plus 98 plus 4 plus 97 on down. And then notice that every single line adds up to 101. Uh, so you add up 50 lines of 101. That's just 50 times 101. That's just 5,000. Oops, 5,000. 50. Uh, pretty clever, huh? <laughs> I think that's incredibly clever. And we can actually use this because this is true not just for digits 1 to 100, but for digits 1 to anything. Okay? Uh, let's see what we did. We took, uh, let's say if I'm adding the digits from uh, 1 to n. So the sum of all my digits from 1 to to n. And what did I do? I, I had half of n. So, uh, so this is going to be the sum of all digits. So the sum of k is going to be n over 2 times, and then what was it? It was my first digit and my last digit. So 1 plus n. I'll call that n plus 1. Okay. As it turns out, this is true for any n. Okay, you use the exact same process. And a clever person among you may be saying, whoa, 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 wait, this worked because we could cut it into two even columns, meaning this works for even n, but it doesn't necessarily work for an odd n. Okay, um, let's show that it also works for an odd n. And by the way, those of you who thought that, good thinking, that's very thorough of you. So uh, what we know is we know that for even ends, uh, the sum as k goes from 1 to n of all k, so basically 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, is going to be n times n plus 1 over 2. That's the same thing I wrote before. I just kind of read, I think I had n plus 1 over 2 to the side, but it's the same thing, okay? That's true for all even n. And so now let's say I have a 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus did, 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 plus n minus 1 uh, plus n for an odd number, okay? Well, I know something about this much of it. Because if n is odd, then n minus 1 is even. And if n minus 1 is even, it has to obey this. So that means this is going to be n... I, now, I have to be careful here. I have to substitute n with n minus 1. So this can be n minus 1 times n over 2 plus n, okay? And now to uh, get this all in one fraction, let me just multiply this n times 2 over 2, and I get, uh, and I'm going to multiply those together, so I get n squared minus n plus 2n over 2, and I can combine these and get n squared plus n over 2, and ruh row that equals n times n plus 1 over 2, which is the exact same thing we had here. So yeah, it works for even numbers and it also works for odd numbers. So that's a handy thing to keep in mind. 
this uh, result right here. You will most likely uh, see this again in the future. Okay? But for the immediate future, what we want to do is we want to come up with a way to add up any arithmetic sequence. Okay? Not just the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, etc. Any arithmetic sequence at all. So, let's see. Uh, let's try to do the same thing that Gauss did. We'll say a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus uh, on down to a sub n over 2. Okay? And again, I know I'm doing it for an even number uh, n, but you can make a very similar adjustment that we did that we just did to show that this also works for uh, odd numbers. And this is going to be n, a n over 2 plus 1. So this will be a sub n, a sub n minus 1, a sub n minus 2, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add them up like this. Okay? Now, what is a sub n? A sub n is, uh, well, let me get the a1 there first. And then a sub n is a1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay? And this is a sub 2. That's a1 plus d. And a sub n minus 1 is a1 plus n minus 2 times d. Are those the same thing? It's two a1s, so 2 times a1 plus n minus 1 times d, and here we have two a1s plus d plus n minus 2 times d is going to get us n minus 1 times d, so yes, those give us the same thing. And sure enough, if I keep on going, I'm always going to get this is a3 and a1 plus n minus 3 times d. I'm always going to get the same amount on each line. So what does that mean? It means I end up with n over 2 lines. And my first line, I could write it like that, but really the easier way to remember it is this right here. Okay? Finding the nth term of, <laughs> finding the nth term of a sequence is pretty easy. So, and you're always given the first term. So just get the first term, get the nth term, add them up, multiply times n over 2, and it works. Now, like I said, so let's go ahead and uh, write that correctly. Okay? This is the sum as k goes from 1 to n of a k. Okay? For an arithmetic series. This must be an arithmetic series series. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Uh, and you'll notice it has to be a finite arithmetic sequence uh, series. You can't... Uh, infinite arithmetic series do not add up to a finite number. Okay? Uh, so, uh, like I said, you can do a very similar proof, similar proof to what we did just a second ago to show that this works for even for odd values of n as well as the even values of n. Okay? So I think this is a pretty good intro to uh, arithmetic sequences and series. I hope this helped you. And uh, next video, we're going to talk about another type of sequence and another type of series called a geometric sequence and series. But until then, see you around.